Welcome back everyone to the Weird Paleontology Iceberg, where we explore weird theories and speculations of ancient life through the remains left by them. This video will cover tier 2, meaning there will be even more weird and obscure theories relating to paleontology. Also quick shout out to everyone who commented nice things in the previous video. I hope you're all excited for this one too. Anyways, let's get started with the first entry. Ceratopsians had no frills. The traditional depiction of ceratopsian dinosaurs often includes elaborate fills, bony structures extending from the back of their skulls. However, an alternate reconstruction proposed in John McLaughlin's text, Archosauria, challenges this conventional representation. McLaughlin's hypothesis suggests that ceratopsians didn't possess frills in the typical sense, but instead had muscular integuments extending from the skull base, resembling a bison-like hump. According to this alternative reconstruction, the so-called frills of ceratopsians were reinterpreted as the attachment sites for extensive muscular structures. Instead of displaying a broad bony frill, these dancers might have had thickened areas of muscles or soft tissues that originated from the back of their skulls. These muscular structures would have extended outward and backward, creating a profile reminiscent of a bison's hump. Essentially, McLaughlin's proposal challenged the prevailing depiction of ceratopsians, offering a different perspective on the function and appearance of their cranial features. But it's still just a hypothesis though, and still hasn't really gained widespread acceptance among paleontologists. David Peters David Peters is known for his involvement in paleontological artwork, his website reptileevolution.com, and his controversial reconstructions of prehistoric creatures, particularly pterosaurs. Peters' work includes creating radical and unconventional reconstructions of pterosaurs by using a method that involves tracing scanned images of fossils with a direct access to the original specimens. This approach has sparked controversy within the paleontological community due to its divergence from traditional scientific methods that rely on direct examinations of fossil specimens. Peters has proposed significant revisions to the reptile family tree, suggesting unconventional evolutionary lineages such as a direct connection between Triassic gilding reptiles like Longus squama and pterosaurs. Additionally, he claims to have identified a new and exotic species, including incredibly small insect-sized pterosaurs. However, many of these proposed discoveries have faced criticism and skepticism from the scientific community, with concerns raised about misinterpretation of digital artifacts present in the images he uses. Also, Peters does not have an institutional platform or academic affiliation supporting his unconventional ideas, unlike other figures in paleontology such as Jack Horner or Alan Fiducia. T-Rex was a scavenger. Jack Horner, a name we just mentioned and also in Tier 1, proposed an intriguing but controversial theory suggesting that Tyrannosaurus rex might have functioned primarily as a scavenger rather than an active predator. Horner's hypothesis challenged the prevailing view of T-Rex as a fearsome apex predator, suggesting that instead it adopted a scavenging lifestyle similar to vultures, predominantly feeding on already deceased animals. However, this notion faced skepticism within the scientific community. The prevailing consensus is that T-Rex was indeed an apex predator, equipped with formidable features such as powerful jaws and sharp teeth, indicating its capability to actively hunt and capture live prey. While it's accepted that T-Rex likely engaged in opportunistic scavenging as observed in many modern large carnivores, the overarching understanding remains that it was a dominant predator in its ecosystem. Additionally, Homer subsequently revised his original hypothesis, clarifying that it was more of a thought experiment rather than a firmly supported and substantiated theory. Tully Monster Tully Monstrum, commonly referred to as the Tully Monster, is a mysterious creature from the Carboniferous period that interests scientists due to its peculiar anatomy and unclear classification. This intriguing animal possesses a unique body structure unlike any other known creature in the fossil record. Preserved fossils depict a soft body organism with a resemblance to a fish, featuring a tubular body and a distinctive appendage resembling a stiff, jointed proboscis near its mouth, which ends in a pincer-like structure. Despite numerous scientific investigations spanning nearly a century, the Tully monster's taxonomic placement remains a persistent mystery. Researchers have proposed various hypotheses, ranging from considering it as a basal vertebrate, mollusk, conodont, or arthropod to even suggesting it might represent a late surviving branch of Cambrian fauna. Still though, this animal continues to confound experts, remaining an enduring puzzle within paleontology despite decades of intense research and scrutiny. Oop Arts Oop Art, an abbreviation for Out of Place Artifact, indicates instances where purportedly human-made objects are discovered within geological layers significantly predating human existence. These artifacts, according to some claims, 
challenge conventional timelines and suggest human presence or technological advancement during periods far earlier than currently accepted by scientific consensus. Examples of oop arts include allegedly anomalous discoveries such as metal objects, tools, or artifacts found in geological strata date to a time when humans were not believed to have existed. Despite their intriguing nature, these artifacts are often met with skepticism, as they typically lack concrete scientific verification and raise questions about their geological context and authenticity. Many of these instances have been debunked or found to be misinterpretations of geological processes, or modern objects mistakenly mixed in with an ancient strata. Caterpillars kill the dinosaurs. Stanley Flanders, an entomologist, proposed an intriguing theory in 1962 suggesting a possible role of caterpillars in the extinction of dinosaurs. Flanders hypothesized that the emergence of flowering plants, an event thought to have occurred during the Cretaceous period, led to the evolution of butterflies and their larvae, commonly known as the caterpillars. According to his theory, the sudden increase in caterpillar populations could have posed a challenge to the existing ecosystem by heavily consuming the newly evolved flowering plants. This consumption might have affected the available food sources for herbivorous dinosaurs and other creatures, potentially contributing to their decline like a domino effect in the food chain. However, this theory still remains speculative and largely hypothetical. As we know, the extinction of dinosaurs is considered a multifaceted event with various contributing factors including asteroid impacts, volcanic activity, climate changes, and ecological imbalances. While Flanders' theory offers an interesting perspective, it lacks comprehensive empirical evidence to substantiate it. Nemesis Star The Nemesis Star hypothesis proposed in the 1980s suggest the existence of a companion star to the sun, hypothesized to be a dim red or brown dwarf. The idea stemmed from a recognized periodicity in mass extinction events on Earth, specifically the proposal that Earth's mass extinctions occurred in cycles of approximately 26 million years. This led some scientists to speculate that a companion star, dubbed Nemesis, might have an elongated orbit that occasionally disrupts the Oort cloud, like we mentioned in Tier 1, sending comets or asteroids hurtling towards Earth. The concept posited that these cosmic disturbances caused by Nemesis might trigger catastrophic events like asteroid impacts, possibly contributing to mass extinctions throughout Earth's history. However, despite the initial interest in the Nemesis star hypothesis, subsequent research and observations have found little evidence supporting the existence of such a celestial body. It's not that it's disproven, but rather scientists haven't discovered any conclusive proof or its associated impacts on Earth's biosphere. Also, the purported regularity of mass extinctions every 26 million years has been challenged, as the timing of events appears more irregular upon further analysis. Taurosaurus is Tyroceratops The hypothesis proposed by Jack Horner in 2010 suggesting that Taurosaurus and Tyroceratops represent the same species has generated substantial debate within the field of Ceratopsian dinosaur studies. Horner postulated that Taurosaurus, known for his distinctive frill with large openings, was simply the mature form of the more widely recognized Triceratops, proposing that Triceratops specimens were juvenile representations of Taurosaurus. Central to this theory was the idea that the apparent differences between Taurosaurus and Triceratops, particularly in their fill structures, were indicative of an ontogenic transformation, meaning changes occurring as the dinosaur aged. Horner argued that the holes in the frill of Taurosaurus closed up as the animal matured into Triceratops. However, some researchers highlighted notable dissimilarities between Taurosaurus and Triceratops, including variations in skull shapes, horn curvature, and the distinct frill features. Critics argue that the differences observed were more consistent with the classification of Taurosaurus and Triceratops as separate species within the Ceratopsian family, rather than different life stages of a single species. Human Hypercarnivore The idea of early humans as obligate carnivores or hyperpredators is a debated concept within human evolution. While it's generally accepted that early humans were omnivores, capable of consuming both animal and plant-based foods, there's no consensus that they were strictly hypercarnivores. The hypothesis proposed that hunting and consuming meat, particularly from large animals, played a pivotal role in human evolution, contributing to the development of human intelligence and culture. Advocates of this theory, such as Mickey Bendor and Ran Barkai, suggest that the high intake of animal protein, especially from hunting megafauna, provided essential nutrients that influenced both brain development and the evolution of human cognitive abilities. Despite that though, while archaeological evidence shows that early humans did consume meat and engage in hunting activities, there's ongoing debate about the proportion of meat in their diet and its direct impact on human evolution. Other factors such as tool use, social interaction, and environmental adaptions 
also played significant roles in shaping human evolution and the development of intelligence and culture. Further research and analysis are needed to fully understand early human diets and their relationship to evolutionary processes. Calvary Skull The Calvary Skull refers to a purported discovery of a human skull found in the Pilocene Age rock formations of Calvary County, California during the 19th century. It gained attention as it seemed to suggest that humans had been present in North America far earlier than previously proposed. However, this finding was eventually revealed to be a hoax. The skull was discovered in 1866 by miners who claimed to have unearthed it from deep layers of geological strata. It was initially considered a remarkable discovery challenging the existing understanding of human history in North America. However, subsequent analysis and research indicated that the skull was actually of recent origin, likely planted or placed in the Pilsen rock layers by unknown individuals to deceive and generate controversy. Maybe kind of like a prank. Despite being debunked and identified as a hoax though by the scientific community, the Calver skull occasionally resurfaces in discussions, particularly among creationists who attempt to present it as evidence against established geological and archaeological timelines. Nano Tyrannus Nano Tyrannus is an intriguing and controversial dinosaur species that has been the subject of intense debate in paleontology. Initially identified as a separate genus, it was proposed to be a smaller and distinct cousin of T. rex. Discovered in the late 20th century, the fossils attributed to Nano Tyrannus consisted of specimens featuring smaller body size and different anatomical characteristics than that of T. rex. However, scientific analysis and detailed examination of the Nano Tyrannus fossils, particularly a skull morphology, growth patterns, and bone structure, have led to prevailing consensus among paleontologists that Nano Tyrannus specimens might represent juvenile individuals of T. rex rather than a separate species. The features, once believed to distinguish Nano Tyrannus as a distinct genus, are now considered to be more consistent with growth stages of young T. rex individuals, indicating that they were not a separate species but rather juvenile specimens of the iconic T. rex. The debate surrounding Nano Tyrannus is still ongoing though, as some researchers propose further studies and analysis to confirm its taxonomic status and clarify its relationship with Tyrannosaurus rex. Birds are not dinosaurs, banned. The banned Birds are not dinosaurs movement stands as a minority faction within the field of paleontology, disputing the widely accepted evolutionary connection between modern birds and their dinosaurian ancestors. Led by researchers like Dave Peters and Alan Fiducia, this group challenges the prevailing consensus that birds directly evolved from Manoraptorian dinosaurs, a theory supported by extensive fossil evidence and molecular studies. Their stance suggests an alternative lineage for birds, dissociating them from dinosaur ancestry. Instead, proponents of the ban movement propose a connection between birds and certain lizard-like terrassic reptiles, such as Longuisquama, as their potential ancestors. They argue that avian characteristics found in raptor fossils are convergent adaptions, and not evolutionary links to dinosaurs. Despite the growing body of evidence that consistently highlights bird-like features in dinosaur fossils and genetic studies supporting the avian-dinosaur relationship, the ban movement persists in rejecting this widely accepted view. Triassic Kraken the Triassic Kraken Hypothesis is a controversial theory proposed by paleontologist Mark McMinnon. This hypothesis suggests the existence of a giant squid or octopus, referred to as the Triassic Kraken during the Triassic period. The theory is based on the peculiar arrangement of the Shawnisaurus remains, a large marine reptile from the Triassic period, found in a deposit in Nevada's Berlin Ichthyosaur State Park. McMenamin posits that the Kraken itself arranged these remains in concentric circles, creating a form of self-portrait. The hypothesis is based on circumstantial evidence, as octopuses are mostly soft-bodied and do not fossilize well. The only hard parts, their beaks or mouth parts, have a low chance of being preserved nearby. Despite McMenamin's confidence in his theory, it has not gained widespread acceptance in the scientific community. Critics argue that the evidence can be explained by less exotic means, and without direct or indirect fossil evidence of a kraken, the theory remains speculative. Is often referred to as a paleocryptid, a creature from the past whose existence is not confirmed by the fossil record. Also, let me know if I should cover a paleocryptid iceberg. I think that would be super interesting to delve into. Lamarckism Lamarckism, named after the French biologist Jean Baptiste Lamarck, is an early evolutionary theory that contrasted with Darwin's concept of natural selection. Lamarck proposed that organisms could pass on acquired traits from their lifetime experiences to their offspring. This theory suggested that an organism could modify its traits during its lifetime in response to its environment, and that these acquired traits could be inherited by its progeny. An offside example was the giraffe, where Lamarck suggested that stretching its neck to reach high branches would result in offspring born with longer necks. 
While Lamarck's original theories have been largely discredited due to the lack of empirical evidence, modern science has uncovered phenomena such as epigenetic inheritance and somatic hypermutation. These discoveries have sparked renewed interest in Lamarckian-like processes in inheritance, demonstrating that environmental factors can influence gene expression without altering the underlying DNA sequence. This has led to a resurgence of interest in understanding how non-genetic factors might impact genetic expression. Deccan Traps Kill Dinosaurs The Deccan Traps, an extensive volcanic region formed during the late Cretaceous period in what is now India, might have been a focal point in the discussion of the dinosaur extinction event. This massive volcanic activity occurred around the same period as the end Cretaceous mass extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs. The hypothesis suggests that the release of large quantities of gas during the volcanic eruptions, including sulfur dioxide and other toxic substances, could have contributed to the decline of the dinosaurs, either independently or in combination with the effects of the meteor impact. The intense volcanic activity of the Deccan Traps released substantial volumes of gases and particulates into the atmosphere. This release would have led to the formation of aerosols and acid rain, potentially altering the climate and poisoning the environment. Sulfur dioxide, in particular, could have reacted with water vapor in the atmosphere, leading to the creation of sulfuric acid aerosols, which could have caused long-term changes in global climate patterns. This scenario might have impacted the food chain, vegetation, and marine ecosystems, ultimately contributing to the mass extinction event. Alan Fiducia Alan Fiducia was a prominent paleoorthonologist known for his controversial stance on the relationship between birds and dinosaurs, a view notably adopted by the band. Fiducia fiercely opposed the widely accepted theory of avian evolution from theropod dinosaurs, arguing that birds did not descend from dinosaurs. Instead, he proposed an alternative ancestor for birds, pointing to Drepanosaurus, a Triassic reptile with a lizard-like body and a bird-like beak skull, as the potential origin. According to Fiducia, Drepanosaurus evolved flight through tree gliding, distancing the evolution of birds from dinosaur ancestry. Fiducia also suggested that many iconic bird-like dinosaurs, including Archaeopteryx, were incapable of flight and were in fact flightless. His views were once influential and impacted the study of the dinosaur-bird connection, having research in favor of his alternative theories. But over time, Fiducia's perspective have been widely discredited and are now considered pseudoscientific. Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis The Younger Dryas Impact Hypothesis proposes a controversial explanation for the sudden climate shift during the Younger Dryas period and the subsequent extinction of the Pleistocene megafauna. This theory suggests that a meteor impact might have been responsible for triggering these significant environmental changes. Proponents of the hypothesis assert that the impact of a meteor or comet could have generated catastrophic consequences, leading to the onset of the Younger Dryas cooling event and potentially contributing to the decline or extinction of various large animal species. One aspect supporting this theory is the proposed identification of a crater in Greenland, purportedly linked to the Younger Dryas impact event. Researchers suggest that evidence found in the Greenland ice cores and geological studies hints at a potential impact event around the same time as the Younger Dryas onset. However, the exact connection between this proposed impact crater and the environmental changes remain a subject of debate. So, despite intriguing evidence, this theory still remains a fringe idea. Esoteric Anthropogenesis Esoteric anthropogenesis is a mystical idea about how humans evolved spiritually, developed by thinkers like Madame Blavatsky and Rudolf Steiner. They suggested that human evolution involves different stages called root races. Each root race represents a particular phase in humanity's spiritual growth and is linked to different times in history. Madame Blavatsky talked about these root races as part of a larger story of human history that mixes myths and ancient beliefs. Rudolf Steiner built on these ideas by creating more detailed stories about human origins. He combined unusual theories from the Victorian era with mystical thoughts to craft a complex view of our past. According to Steiner, human evolution didn't follow the same path as what scientists typically believe. He described a sequence where humans went from being formless entities to giant Aryan beings. Steiner claimed these ancient Aryans communicated through thoughts and lived alongside creatures like plesiosaurs. These ideas are said to be based on spiritual beliefs, mixing myths, old stories, and spiritual concepts to create a different story of how humans came to be. Arboreal Hypsilophodon In 1912, paleontologist Otanio Abel put forth an interesting but eventually outdated theory about the lifestyle of Hypsilophodon, a small herbivorous dinosaur. Abel suggested that Hypsilophodon possessed feet with opposable toes that could grasp onto tree branches. 
This concept gained acceptance for over three decades, influencing many early depictions that portrayed Hypsilophodon with a vertical posture, a tail used for gripping, and an image resembling a modern tree kangaroo standing on a branch. However, despite the initial acceptance of this arboreal hypothesis, some scientists began to question its validity due to the absence of other physical traits indicating an arboreal lifestyle in Hypsilophodon. The turning point came in 1971 when P.M. Galton published an extensive review that contradicted the arboreal theory. Galton's research provided evidence suggesting that Hypsilophodon had horizontal posture, a raised tail, and feet more suited to a grounded lifestyle rather than one adapted for climbing trees. Alien greys evolved from dinosaurs. The idea that aliens, particularly the greys and reptiles reported in UFO encounters, are descendants of intelligent, spacefaring dinosaurs is a concept found in some ufological and conspiracy theory literature. This idea suggests that these extraterrestrial beings have their origins traced back to intelligent dinosaurs that, according to the theory, somehow managed to leave Earth before the meteor impact event, which is believed to have caused the extinction of the dinosaurs. This idea doesn't really have support from mainstream scientific communities though, so it's still considered a conspiracy theory. The concept combines elements of science fiction, conspiracy theories, and imaginative narratives rather than being grounded in credible scientific research or empirical observation. It does make for a really interesting theory though. Shiva Hypothesis The Shiva Hypothesis, also known as coherent catastrophism, is a theory that suggests global natural catastrophes on Earth, such as extinction events, occur at regular intervals due to the periodic motion of the Sun in relation to the Milky Way galaxy. This hypothesis was initially proposed in 1971 by William Napier and Victor Kloop, who suggested that gravitational disturbances caused by the solar system crossing the plane of the Milky Way galaxy could disturb comets in the Oort cloud surrounding the solar system. This would send comets towards the inner solar system, increasing the chance of an impact. According to the hypothesis, this results in the Earth experiencing large impact events approximately every 30 million years. The theory was later developed by Michael R. Rampino and Bruce Haggerty, who renamed it after Shiva, the Hindu god of destruction. Sapiens genocide all other human species Throughout much of our evolutionary past, Homo sapiens coexisted with various other human species. Evidence suggests that at least 9 distinct species of humans inhabited the planet alongside Homo sapiens. However, by around 10,000 years ago, all these other human species had become extinct. While the exact reasons behind each extinction event are complex and localized, there's growing evidence that Homo sapiens played a role in the demise of these close relatives. William Golding's 1955 novel The Inheritors painted a moving picture of a small Neanderthal group facing complete annihilation, suggesting the theory that Homo sapiens might have deliberately contributed to the extinction of other human species. This novel helped popularize the idea that our species may have been responsible for the disappearance of these human relatives. Additionally, the book hinted at a then fringe theory proposing interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. Initially considered pseudoscience, this idea has since been substantiated by genetic research. Modern genetic studies have shown conclusive evidence of interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals, indicating that these two species definitely had contact and intermixed at various points in history. Goblin toenails and snake tongues. All right, just judging by the name, you can see how the deeper we're going in this iceberg, the entries are definitely getting weirder. I'm excited to get into the final tiers, so expect part three very soon. Anyways, in English folklore, during ancient times, certain fossils found by people were identified and given weird explanations. For instance, ammonite fossils, which resemble spiral-shaped cells, were believed to be goblins' as toenails in folklore. These ammonite fossils were viewed as mysterious objects, often sparking supernatural tales and stories in local communities. People would come across these peculiar shaped fossils and attribute them to mythical creatures like goblins, creating fantastical tales about their origins. Similarly, fossilized shark teeth were referred to as snake tongues in folklore. These fossilized teeth, with their sharp and peculiar appearance, were thought to resemble the tongues of snakes by people who encountered them. They became part of folklore and were used in stories or folk beliefs. Beyond their role in folklore though, these fossils also found practical use in ancient times. They were utilized in traditional medicine, believed to possess healing or magical properties. Additionally, they were also commonly displayed in curiosity cabinets, collections that showcased various different oddities and artifacts, attracting interest by people due to their unusual shapes and appearances. Aquatic Ape Hypothesis The Aquatic Ape Hypothesis is a speculative idea proposing that at some point in human evolutionary history, our ancestors had a semi-aquatic phase that influenced our physical traits and behaviors. 
This hypothesis suggests that certain human characteristics, such as hairlessness, bipedalism, under the skin fat distribution, and the ability to hold breath voluntarily may have been adaptions acquired through a period of living in a semi aquatic or aquatic environment. The hypothesis was initially proposed by marine biologist Alistair Hardy in the 1960s and later popularized by writer Elaine Morgan. Proponents of the aquatic ape hypothesis suggest that our ancestors might have inhabited coastal or aquatic environments, potentially foraging for food or taking refuge in aquatic settings. Supporters of this hypothesis argue that traits like a relatively hairless skin, which differs from other primates, could have evolved as adaptions to an aquatic environment, aiding in swimming or regulating body temperature. Additionally, characteristics such as our upright posture and the location of our nose are also cited as potential aquatic adaptions. It's an interesting take, but this theory still remains pretty controversial. Sex Lakes The concept of sex lakes in relation to dinosaur extinction is a theory proposed by Brian Ford, suggesting that dinosaurs were at least semi-aquatic creatures and that the rapid depletion of mating lakes was a significant factor leading to their extinction. According to his theory, these bodies of water, termed sex lakes, played a crucial role in mating and reproduction of dinosaurs. Ford proposed that a sudden drying up or depletion of these vital lakes resulted in a catastrophic decline in dinosaur populations, ultimately contributing to their extinction. The term sex lakes has since become a meme though, used jokingly to refer to unconventional or less scientifically supported theories regarding the extinction of dinosaurs. The idea has garnered attention for its unusual premise and has been associated with ill-considered or fringe theories about dinosaur extinction, especially in popular culture and online forums. Dinosaurs Killed by Inertia The theory proposing that dinosaur extinction was caused by evolutionary inertia was once a popular idea rooted in old perceptions of dinosaurs as excessively large, slow-witted creatures. The theory suggested that dinosaurs became excessively large and intellectually limited, resulting in their inability to adapt to changing environments, ultimately leading to their demise. The concept was influenced by orthogenetic thinking, a belief that evolution follows a predetermined, confined path towards an inevitable outcome, in this case, self-destruction. In the past, this theory was presented in many dinosaur books, painting a picture that dinosaurs had become too unwieldy and inefficient for survival, paving the way for their extinction and allowing mammals to take their place in the ecosystem. However, this theory had several shortcomings. For instance, it overlooked the fact that during the Jurassic period, considered the heyday of dinosaurs, many large and successful species thrived, contrary the notion that large size alone led to their downfall. Functionalism, Cuvier Georges Cuvier, referred to as the father of paleontology, significantly shaped the early scientific understanding of our prehistoric life. He's credited with pioneering the concept of species extinction and developing the method of comparative anatomy. However, Cuvier fiercely opposed the idea of transmutation of species or evolution, engaging in famous non-evolutionary functionalism debates with scientists like Lamarck. Cuvier's perspective asserted that different species appearing in various geological layers were not the result of evolutionary processes, but were separately and fully formed through distinct creation events at different times. He argued that each species remained unchanged until its eventual extinction. According to Cuvier, every species was meticulously designed to serve a specific function, and even minor changes could render it non-functional. His authoritative stance and influential position in the field of paleontology halted serious scientific inquiry into evolutionary theories until after his death. Cuvier's strong opposition to the idea of species transformation basically hindered the acceptance and exploration of evolutionary concepts during his lifetime. Cuvier's non-evolutionary functionalism, though influential in its time, eventually gave way to the advancement of evolutionary theories proposed by scientists such as Charles Darwin that are accepted now. Archaeology Archaeology, sort of seen from the name, is a field focused on searching for evidence related to Noah's Ark, as described in religious texts, particularly the Bible. Archaeologists seek to find physical remains or artifacts believed to be associated with a legendary vessel that, according to a biblical narrative, preserved Noah, his family, and pairs of animals during a catastrophic global flood. Mount Ararat in Turkey has been a focal point for claims about the possible location of Noah's Ark, with some enthusiasts and researchers conducting expeditions or investigations in this region in pursuit of evidence supporting the Ark's existence. During the early development of geology as a scientific discipline, flood geology significantly influenced interpretations of Earth history. This perspective, rooted in religious beliefs and the biblical narrative of a worldwide flood, shaped many early geological interpretations. 
flood geology contributed to the emergence of terms like antediluvian, meaning before the flood, and influenced prominent early geological theories such as Neptunism and Burnett's sacred theory. These theories proposed that geological features were the result of supernatural or catastrophic events, aligning with the idea of a global flood described in religious texts. Monadology Monadology is a philosophical concept that regards the fundamental building blocks of existence as individual entities called monads. This theory suggests that these monads are made of divine or absolute substance, which is infinite and omnipresent. The idea attributes a universal substance to God or the absolute, describing it as a substance whose center is everywhere and whose circumference is nowhere. According to monadology, individual entities, whether organic such as living organisms or inorganic such as objects, are all composed of these monads, each possessing its own unique characteristics. Unlike vitalism, which attributes specific vital forces to living beings, monadology views both living and non-living entities as arising from the same simple substance. This includes thoughts, ideas, perceptions, and species, all conceived as manifestations of these monads. Before Darwin's theory of evolution, the concept of species rising and falling based on the nature of the originating monad held prominence in scientific and philosophical thought. Richard Owen, a prominent biologist and Darwin's contemporary, was a proponent of monadology. Owen opposed Darwin's idea of species adapting or going extinct due to environmental changes. According to Owen, extinction was an inevitable consequence of a species reaching old age, similar to individuals dying when their living energy had reached its natural limit. However, Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection, published in On the Origin of Species, offered a completely different perspective. Also, let me know if you guys have read that book. I haven't read it yet, but I really want to. Ediacaran Garden The Ediacaran biota, a group of ancient organisms that lived around 635 to 541 million years ago, presents a fascinating mystery in evolutionary history. These organisms, found in fossil records from the Ediacaran period, exhibit diverse and peculiar body plans that differ significantly from any life forms present on Earth today. They display unique features such as fractal growth patterns asymmetrical spiral shapes, and even internal structures resembling accretions of silt, which some researchers speculate may have served as a type of rudimentary skeletal system. Numerous hypotheses have been proposed to explain the nature and identity of the Ediacaran organisms. These range from suggestions associating them with lichens, fungi, algae, sneadarians like jellyfish or sea anemones, or even considering them as abiotic traces mistaken for organic fossils. One intriguing hypothesis proposed by Mark McMenamin introduces the concept of the Ediacaran Garden. This hypothesis suggests that the Ediacarans were an entirely unique group of organisms, referred to as pair animals, which emerged as a crucial evolutionary intersection between plants and animals. McMenamin proposed that these organisms represented a distinct evolutionary branch, displaying characteristics reminiscent of plants by exhibiting behaviors and lifestyles more similar to animals, sort of like a plant animal. Dinosaur Psychology In the field of dinosaur behavior, often termed paleoethology, there are attempts to reconstruct the behavior and interactions of dinosaurs based on available evidence such as fossilized trackways, nesting sites, and bone structures. These clues can provide insights into local mation, social interactions, nesting behaviors, and even potential hunting strategies of certain dinosaur species. However, figuring out non-material aspects like cognition, emotions, or cultural behaviors from fossil evidence remains a significant challenge. While modern animals' behavior can sometimes offer parallels for speculation, accurately attributing specific psychological states or cultural practices to extinct creatures is highly speculative. Some paleoethologists draw upon evidence from animal behaviors observed in modern birds and reptiles, which are evolutionary descendants of dinosaurs, to make educated guesses about certain behavior. Pharmacuto paleontology. Pharmacutopaleontology refers to a belief or practice of using fossils in traditional or occult medical treatments. In some cultures, including present-day China, there exists a belief in the healing or mystical properties of certain fossils for medicinal purposes. Fossils like Ammonides or shark teeth may have been historically used in traditional Chinese medicine, associated with specific health benefits or remedies. This practice might stem from cultural beliefs or folklore regarding the perceived medicinal properties of these ancient remains. Similarly, in English folklore, there are beliefs in the therapeutic or magical qualities of certain fossils. For instance, like we talked about in an early entry, Ammonides were occasionally referred to as snake tongues and fossilized shark teeth were identified as goblin toenails. 
These fossils were sometimes incorporated into medicinal practices or considered items of mystical significance, likely due to their unusual shapes and appearances. Saltationism Saltationism is a theory in evolutionary biology that proposes species evolve through sudden and significant leaps or jumps, referred to as saltations, rather than gradually through the accumulation of small, incremental changes as proposed by Darwinian natural selection. This concept suggests that new species arise rapidly through the occurrence of hopeful monsters or individuals with sudden and substantial mutations that serve as the foundational for new species to emerge. Additionally presented as an alternative to Darwin's theory of natural selection, saltationism posited the idea that major evolutionary changes were the result of these abrupt and substantial mutations. Despite its initial dismissal, some scholars such as Richard Goldsmith and later Stephen J. Gold reintroduce certain aspects of saltationism into evolutionary theory. They propose the concept of punctuated equilibria, suggesting that evolutionary changes occur in relatively rapid bursts during periods of stasis, followed by long periods of stability in species. This idea highlighted episodes of rapid speciation or evolutionary change, supporting the notion that significant evolutionary developments can occur relatively quickly in geological timescales. Archaeoraptor the Archaeoraptor fossil became a notable case in paleontology due to its status as a fabricated fossil, representing an attempted hoax to depict the missing link between dinosaurs and birds. This composite fossil was created by combining the body of a bird-like dinosaur, known as Microraptor, with the tail and hind legs of a bird, possibly from the species Yanornis. In 1999, the quote-unquote discovery of Archaeoraptor was published by National Geographic magazine highlighting it as a significant evolutionary find linking dinosaurs and birds. However, suspicions arose regarding the authenticity of the fossil, with some paleontologists raising concerns about possible forgery or manipulation of the specimen. Subsequent investigations revealed that the Archaeoraptor fossil was actually a composite forgery, artificially created by combining unrelated fossil parts to give the appearance of a transitional creature between dinosaurs and birds. It was an attempt to portray a missing link that did not actually exist in the fossil record. The publication of the Archaeoraptor findings, despite warnings of potential forgery, led to comparisons with the Piltdown Man Affair, if anyone remembers it from Tier 1, a notorious case in which a fraudulent fossil was presented as an early human ancestor in the early 20th century. So that concludes Tier 2. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and consider subscribing and liking the video. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.